No one likes to hear, I mean, well, no one should like, uh, some people do. No one should like to hear people talking crap about other people. Right. Just in general, right? And especially if it's like a brother or sister in Christ or someone that, you're, you know, the Bible's commanding, you're supposed to love that person. Don't go talking crap about people. I mean, how, how are you supposed to really love that person if you're, if you're talking crap about them and no one wants to be on the receiving end of that and hearing that stuff? And, you know, the Bible gives a lot of warnings to ladies about being tail bearers and gossip and things like that because it's more likely for women to, to fall into that sin than it is for men. Everyone's capable of it, but it's part of, of a female nature to, to be more given to that type of a sin. It's more natural. So watch out for those things. Watch out for the tail bearing and those types of things as well because you might think, well, it's nothing to do with my husband. I love my husband, but yeah, he's not going to want to hear that all the time or at all. They go hand in hand. Turn back, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 7. Now we're getting some more of the characteristics and attributes that godly women shouldn't have. And this goes, you know, for, for the first part of the sermon, I was, it was focusing mostly on husbands and wives, right? Because it's talking about living together and being contentious and having that authority structure. But just in women in general, there are certain attributes that are not godly attributes. And before I even get started on this, you know, I, I just want people to understand this too, because you know, young people listen up as well as old people. This is for everybody. And and for all ladies in general. Because the the way that the world is, the world, especially for younger people, you know, there's a draw to popularity. There's a draw to want to be liked by people. And especially women who want to have attention and affection on them, there's even more of a draw to conform to the world because you'll have more people giving you attention. And be careful, if you're in, especially if you're in an area where you're going to be dating and looking for other people, because you're going to want people to be attracted to you, but you make sure you're looking for the right people to be attracted to you. Because if you're looking to the ways of the world, to fit in with the world, just to get people to attract you, you're going to be attracting worldly guys that are not going to be interested in, in good things for you. They're not going to have your best interests at heart. They'll have their own. And if you're looking for that, and, 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 and at best, you'll have someone who you could say, well, maybe they're interested in me, but they're, if they're already blinded by this world, it's going to lead you into a lot of problems anyways with sin. Because if they're blinded by the world's propaganda, and if you're blinded by the world's propaganda, you know, we can give you the warnings over and over and over and over and over again. But if you're not willing to accept them and say, you know what, no, I trust that this actually is right and this is true, then you will stumble and fall. And the whole point of these sermons is to warn you and to protect you and help you and say, look, don't go down this path because it's a path of destruction. Because the end of sin is death, at the end of the game, right? And everywhere in between, there's, there's uh, snares and pitfalls and, and a lot of things that happen in life that we don't want to have you to deal with. And there's this, this draw to be popular, but in order to be popular, you need to be more like the world, right? So you have to go along with, with the worldly ways to be popular. And that's just the way it is. And... and that is going to mean you're going to have to sacrifice what the Word of God says because the Word of God is completely contrary to the way of the world. And the more godly you are, the more spiritual you are, the less like the world you're going to be. And if you're looking for people to like you, if you're looking for, for a potential spouse or whatever, you know, you ought to want to have a godly, you know, as for ladies especially, a godly husband. Because if you find someone who's a godly husband, they're going to wonder they should take their vows seriously. If you're looking for someone to marry you, you're going to want someone who's going to take their vows seriously, unlike the way the world works today. Because the way the world works today, people make vows on their wedding day, and then they get divorced. Sometimes within months, sometimes within weeks, sometimes within days. Okay, it happens. It, it's a joke. It is. I mean, people are laughing. It's a big joke these days. 
It didn't used to be that way, even in the world, but you know what the way the world's become these days? You could get divorced in hours. And it's just a big stinking joke. Or maybe in a year or two years or whatever, right? Your husband is not a godly man, doesn't really care about the things of God. Oh, but you attracted him, good job. You got married to him, and now you're going to be stuck, maybe with a child or two, and he's going to leave, and then you're going to be a divorced person. What are we going to do? You're going to add sin on sin and get remarried? Why don't you marry someone who's going to care about the things of God and understand and take that vow till death do us part? And you know what? That's just one thing. That's just one thing. That's the most basic thing, someone who actually cares about their vow. Now, maybe you can find someone who cares about their vow that's not very godly, but what about all the other things in your life that are important in how God's going to bless you or not bless you based on how you're living your life as a saved person? 